Um, we're going to straight go on to a very exciting portion of our uh, course, which is prevention of fires in the operating room. And Dr. William Richardson is going to give us a 15-minute review of that. Dr. Richardson, thank you very much. Thank you, Pascal and Lane. I have uh, nothing to disclose. Uh, this is a hot topic. If you want to become very famous very quickly, have a major fire in the operating room. Uh, there are a number of ways to do that. You could uh, be performing a tracheostomy. Uh, you may even have the FiO2 turned down to 30%, but if you enter the uh, trachea with electrosurgery, you could potentially cause an airway fire. Uh, if you're working on a posterior neck lesion with a patient in the prone position and there's some oxygen leaking out of a face mask, you'll get a high oxygen-rich environment underneath your drapes and you could easily cause a fire that might not be even right next to where you're cauterizing. If you enter the navel through an area of undried PrEP solution that contains alcohol and you bovie something in that area, you could cause a fire in the navel or of the drapes if they're nearby. These are all avoidable, but if you are performing uh, surgery in the chest and the patient is on a high FiO2, you may cause an unavoidable fire. Fires require three things, and all you need to do is stop one of them in order to completely avoid fires, but they need oxygen, fuel, and an ignition source. Um, in the earlier era, era when we were using ether, we were very careful about avoiding sparks. Fortunately, we're not using uh, ether anymore. Uh, electrosurgery risks, though, are still can be caused in unprepped bowel where there may be high hydrogen levels or methane, or if mannitol is used as a prep for the bowel, um, you can increase an environment where you could cause an intra-abdominal explosion. And nitrous oxide also can cause an explosion in the abdomen. Fires, fortunately, are rare, but potentially they are devastating. There are around 550 to 650 cases that are reported. 95% are relatively minor. 20 to 30 ser uh, serious injuries occur annually, and there are about two to three deaths each year due to fires in the operating room. Uh, the Joint Commission has come out with Preventing Surgical Fires document, and AORN has listed it as one of their top 11 priorities to work on in terms of safety topics. The fire triangle is um, having a heat source, uh, which can be uh, electrosurgery units or lasers and other uh, surgical devices, having a fuel such as the drapes or prep solution or hair even, and an oxidizer such as uh, oxygen or nitrous oxide. Uh, prevention does require coordination, so you do want to talk with the people in your operating room about what you're doing to try and avoid a fire. 21% of fires occur in the airway. Uh, those are some of the more devastating and lethal injuries, but there's a lot in the upper chest, head, and neck, again, largely due to the um, oxygen escaping uh, in underneath the drapes. Uh, ignition sources or electrosurgery units for 70% of fires, lasers for 10%, and then other equipment such as fiber optic light sources. And I can't, I can say that it's not infrequently that we get a little burn from the electro, from the light sources in our operating room, of the drape anyway. Uh, Oxygen-rich environments, again, uh, cause 75% of fires. PrEP solutions are 4% of fires. That's not negligible. Electrosurgery units, 70%. Lasers, 10%. And then, of course, light sources, defibrillators, and high-speed burrs have also been uh, used to cause fires in the operating room. Uh, the ECRI Institute uh, has put together a nice pamphlet on prevention of surgical fires and uh, they actually come by and can help you do drills in your operating room. And I'm going to go over some of the things that are in that pamphlet. Again, um, oxygen, nitrous oxide, and compressed air can be used to cause fires, particularly through uh, face mask or cannulas when those things escape around the mask. And you can see there a um, fire coming out of, a, of an ET tube. Pretty nice fire there. Uh, tracheostomy. Uh, you should go through using cold instruments if possible through the trachea. Um, 
when using electric cautery, beware of the what's going on oxygen-wise. Have a discussion, particularly if you're working in the above the uh, xiphoid with your anesthesiologist, and make sure that you're securing the oxygen. Uh, don't apply drapes until prep solutions are dry, and there are several ORs where you have to wait three minutes before applying the drapes. Make sure to connect fiber optic light cables before you turn the light up on high settings and keep them on the standby position when they're not attached. Uh, then, if a fire does occur, you do want to have a root cause analysis so that you, everybody can be retrained in proper use of equipment in the operating room that requires an interdisciplinary team, a thorough and credible review of the accident, a detailed literature review of fires in the operating room, and then professional networking to make sure that everybody learns something from the occasion. Uh, then move on to risk reduction um, strategies. Um, fire prevention training in the operating room should be occurring and evolving both the lay staff and the surgeons and anesthesiologists. Preoperative fire risk assessment should be done on patients so that patients who are at high risk, particularly patients where you're operating above the xiphoid, have open oxygen sources, and uh, when you're using ignition sources, those all increase risk. And you need to be aware of that and discuss that as a team so you can prevent an accident from occurring. You can work on prevention protocols uh, in your operating room, such as having a, observing a specific drying time after putting on your prep making sure that you don't um, dampen your towels with prep solution because they can then easily catch fire if you're boving around them. Uh, if you're we're doing uh, head and neck surgery, you might consider using uh, saline dampened sponges or having uh, syringes with saline in them to help put out a fire. Uh, you want to protect your um, heat sources, so uh, put your bovi cautery back where it belongs in its holster. And you might minimize electrosurgery settings so you're not using high amps. Uh, again, developing a safety education program is very important. Um, when using electrosurgery, um, you do want to be aware of open oxygen sources which could catch fire. Activate unit only when the tip is in view and then stop activating it when it's not in view. It's safer, of course, to activate it when it's actually touching the tissue that you plan on using it on, but certainly not activating it when it's outside of your view is very important. Uh, place the uh, electrosurgery unit in a holster when it's not in use, and don't use things, rubber sleeves, to cover the unit, uh, the tip of the unit, as is in that picture. Those are not, that's just not approved. Uh, if a fire does occur and it's, uh, you want to stop, the uh, first disconnect the gases to the patient and then remove the ET tube. Extinguish the, remove the materials from the patient and then extinguish the, uh, the drapes off of the patient. And we remember some time ago when we were doing a fire drill in the operating room and uh, we were putting out the fire by putting saline on the drapes, but in actuality, the first thing you want to do is remove the drapes from the patient. And then after you've done that and secured the uh, fire away from the patient or the burning materials away from the patient, um, you want to restore uh, care for the patient. Uh, that brings us to the RACE and acronym. The first uh, part of the RACE and acronym is uh, rescue, attempt to rescue the patient from the fire. And then alert people around you that this is going on. Call the fire department if necessary. You want to confine the fire into the room. So that means isolating the room, closing the doors, shutting off all medical gas valves to that operating room. Automatic smoke evacs and electrical power to the room should be turned off. And then evacuate the room or, if necessary, the entire surgical suite for a large fire. Uh, there are many guidelines and resources uh, to help you put together a program in your operating room, and you're welcome to contact me too if you need any further guidance. Thank you very much.